This is Math 99. We're doing Section 9.5a and its applications. So let's uh, just do a bunch of sample problems. That's really, I think, the best way to, to get at these. So um, I have a person, Jared, is selling tickets to ride the Ferris wheel at a local carnival. Uh, the tickets cost $2 for adults and $1.50 for children. How many of each kind of ticket did he sell if he sold a total of 300 tickets for $525? So notice we have two different things that we that we know here we know we know the cost of tickets for adults and children we don't know the number of tickets for adults and children so let's define that um, so a is going to be my number of adult tickets and uh, i'll see you c for children number of ch child tickets that are bought so notice that's just the number of child tickets that doesn't tell me about anything about the total amount of money but I know that a total of 300 tickets were sold. So if I take the number of adult tickets plus the number of children tickets, I get $300. So that's just something that's telling me something about the number of tickets that were sold. Now let's talk about the money. Um, they made $525. So this is gonna be something about the amount of money uh, that was brought in. So it's $2 for each adult ticket. So A is how many adult tickets they are. So that means that it's it's $2 per adult ticket. I can just write that as 2A. So notice like if they send if they sell 10 adult tickets, A would be 10, that would be 20 bucks. Um so that's money and then $1.50 for child tickets, so $1.50 times the number of child tickets. Right? Two child tickets would be dollars two times a dollar fifty for ten would be fifteen ten times that. so I'm going to write this as 1.5 C so this is the amount of money brought in from adults this is the amount of money brought in from children if we add those together we know that's 525 so now I have this 2a plus 1.5 C is equal to 525 and now notice I have my system uh, written and now all I have to do is just solve that system to to get at it so let me let me do that just cancel out one of these a's so if I multiply this top one by by negative 2 and add it to the second one that will that'll cancel that that a there and I'll put it in the equation 2 spot so negative 2 times equation 1 that would make this a negative 2a um, that would make this negative 2c that would make this a negative 600 and now when I add those together notice what I get is that cancels out um, negative 2 times 0.5 is negative uh, 0.5c. It looks like a 20, doesn't it? It's a, it's a c. And then negative 600 um, plus 525 is negative 75. Divide both sides by negative 0.5. And uh, I'll do that on my calculator. I got 150. So that means I would have sold uh, one. We would have sold 150 child tickets. I can plug that back in, and it looks like uh, the number of adult tickets would also be 100. So um, 150 adult tickets, 150 child tickets, and that just happened to be that those were the same. Um, you know, I like it here because it adds to 300. Let me check it here. Let me make sure that this happens here. So if I plug these in. I'm um, 2 times 150 plus 1.5 times 150 should equal 525, not 525. And uh, I'll just check that on my calculator real quick. So 2 times 150 plus uh, 1.5 times 150 is 525. So yeah, that worked. Great, so there's that first, first problem. Let's jump up to a next problem. Uh, Noel receives $17,000 in two loans. One loan charges 5% interest per year, the other 6.5% interest per year. If her total interest after one year is $970, how much is each loan? All right, so we know a couple of things. We know she has two loans. We don't know the balance of each loan. Uh, that's what we're trying to find. So we have this 5% loan and this 6.5%. So let's let X and Y stand for uh, the principal 
in each of those. So how much money's in there? Um, what's nice about that is we know that that's the total amount. So if we add up the amount of money in each in each loan, it is seventeen thousand. Uh, one loan charges five percent; the other six point five percent. So now we want to know something about the interest. We know the total interest was nine hundred and seventy dollars. Now notice that's just the interest; that's not the total amount she owes. So that should be five percent of this plus six point five percent of that. So five percent of this, I can write it as 0.05x. 6% of this, I can write as 0.065y. And I know that if I add those interests together, uh, that should be the total interest that uh, that was accrued after one year. So 0.05x plus 0.065y will equal 970. So now I just have the system to solve. You know, I can shove it into a matrix if I want. Um, one thing that I notice is these decimals. Uh, decimals are kind of kind of bugging me, so I think that I'm going to kind of rewrite this. I'm going to I'm going to keep that first x plus y equals seventeen thousand. But here I'm going to multiply um, this equation two by a hundred, and what that'll do is that'll shift all of my decimals over. Oh, I got to do it by a thousand over three places. So I'm going to go times one thousand. And so notice if I do that, this becomes 50x, this becomes 65y, and this becomes 970 uh, with three more zeros behind it. And there we go. And, I, you know, the only reason why I did that is so I don't have to deal with decimals. You really don't have to do that if you're comfortable dealing with the decimals. Um, so now I'm going to solve this system. And I think in order to solve this uh, that's a 50. So I'm going to multiply this equation 1 by negative 50 and add it to equation 2. So if I multiply this by negative 50, I get negative 50x, negative 50y, and then uh, 1,700 times negative 50, uh, sorry, 17,000 times negative 50. I'm just doing it on my calculator. Uh, negative 850,000. So that means that now I can do some subtraction. Negative 50 plus 50 is 0. Um, negative 50y plus 65y is 15y. And then uh, negative 850,000 plus 970,000. That is 120,000. And now what I can do is divide by 15. It looks like y is 8,000. And if y is 8,000, I can plug it back into here to figure out what x is. x plus 8,000 equals 17,000. So y, uh, x looks like x is 9,000. So the 5% um, loan was for $9,000. And the 6.5% loan was for $8,000. And, um, you know, they work here. I can plug them back into here to make sure that they, that they work. All right, let's dig on into the next problem. Uh, Mary has a balance on three accounts, so three different accounts that charge uh, 5%, 7%, and 8% in annual interest. So it looks like it says it's just compounding once. Once uh, We don't know how much there is in there, so let's just call this A, B, and C. And this is the um, amount that's in each account. So a couple things that we know. Uh, she has three times as much account in the balance with 8% as she does with 5%. So three times as much here as there is here. So that tells me that um, if I triple the amount that's in here, that would be how much is in here. Three times as much in here as in here. So there's one thing that we know. Um, the total balance from all three accounts is 1,600. So if I add all three accounts together, that total is uh, 1,600. I'm going to move this over here. Add three times that. We know that they add up to 
1,600. What's the other thing we know? Oh, we know her interest for the year comes to $115. So just the interest alone earned on these. So if there'd be 5% earned on A, 7%, that'd be 70%, 7% uh, earned on B, and 8% earned on C is $115. So we can, we can add that to our system too. 05A plus 0.07B plus 0.08C equals 115. And so now I have this system that's in, uh, in three variables. And I can go to solve it how, however I want. I might want to shove it into a calculator. I could do some substitution. I'm going to show you two different ways to do of them. And one of them is put it in a calculator. So um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Subtract C from both sides. So I have 3A um, plus C equals 0. No, that would be minus C because I subtracted it. I want minus C from both sides. And then this would be A plus B plus C equals 1,600. And then this one, I can leave it in the decimals. Um, or if I wanted to multiply everything by 100 to make it so I didn't have any decimals, I'd have 5A plus 7B plus 8C, and I multiplied by 100. So there'd be two more zeros here equals that. And then, so now what I notice I have the system I can solve however I want. I'm going to shove it into the calculator, I think. So let me bring the calculator up. And this would be a three by four. So I can bring that up so that I can double check it. So now I will uh, reduce row echelon form that thing. And there's my answer. Like it tells me right away how much is in each account. 300, 400, and I didn't notice. So the last one was 900. That's the 5% the 7%, the 8%. You know, on an assessment on a problem like this, if you show me that matrix and then just say, you know, use my calculator, I'm fine with that. Um, the nice thing, you know, this one, you, you can be kind of more clever about this one too instead of use the calculator. Well, I don't know if it's more clever. Be a little more creative. Um, so 3A equals C. I'm still going to use these two. But I know that 3A equals C. So that means that I can replace every C with a 3A. So notice I've already eliminated one. So I would have A plus B plus 3A equals 1,600. 5A plus 7B plus 8 times 3A equals 11,500. And then I could just go from there. And then I just have a 2 by 2, right? I can divide some like terms up with A's. And I still get these answers. Great, let's do another one. Um, how many ounces of a 30% hydrochloric acid solution and an 80% hydrochloric acid solution must be mixed to get 10 ounces of a 50% solution? So we have this 30% solution. We have an 80% solution. And, and we don't know how many ounces there are in each of them. We know we want the total to be 10. We don't know how much is here or how much is there. We need to figure that out. But we do know that once we mix them together, we want there to be this to be a 50%. So notice it's 50% of the total. So these are our percentages. And so if we have 30% of that and 80% of that, we want it to be 50%. So we have all our pieces for our system. We know that the number of ounces and the 30 plus the number of ounces in the 80 is 10. And we know if we mix this with this, it should end up being that. Great. So um, ba -ba -ba, x plus y is 10. I'm going to say this is 0.3x plus 0.ay equals um, 5, right? 0.5 times 10. And I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 10 just to get rid of the decimals. So 3x plus 8y equals 50. 
And then now I just have the system to solve. And I think that what I'll do is go three, negative three times the first equation and add it to the second equation. Because that'll eliminate my x's. So when I multiply this by negative three, it's negative three x, negative three y, negative 30. Let me add them together. Uh, that's a zero, which I wanted to happen. Negative three plus eight, what is that, five? Five y, negative 30 plus 50 is 20. Divide by five. Looks like that's supposed to be a five. Y is four. So if Y is four, X must be six. So there'd be six ounces of the 30% solution and four ounces of the 80% solution. So again, let's check it. Just plug it into here. So uh, 0.3 times X, that's the 30% of six plus 0.84, that should equal five. So let's see, uh, 0.3 times six, six times three is 18. So that's a 0.18, a 1.8. And uh, 0.8 times four, that's 3.2, uh, three, four. Yeah, that equals five, great. So there's our solution. All right, one, one last example. How much 25% antifreeze and 50% antifreeze should be combined to give 40 gallons of 30% antifreeze. That's great. Uh, so we have 25% and 50%, and we're going to mix it uh, total. We don't know how many gallons um, of each we have. That's what we're trying to figure out. So we'll call that X, call that Y. We want that total to be 40. So there's one of our equations right there. And then the, the mix, the percent mix, um, this would be 0.25 times X. This would be 0.5 or 0.50 times Y. And then we want it to end up being 30%. And the total is 40. So we know that X plus Y is 40. That's our total, uh, total gallons. We also know these percentages, 0.25X plus 0.5Y equals... Uh, 0.3 times 40, uh, that would be 12. All right, so let's go ahead and go from here. I'll keep rewriting my sixth system. X plus Y equals 40. Uh, I'm going to multiply this one by 100 just to get rid of the decimals. So that means I have a 25X, a 50Y, and then a 1,200. Okay, and then now to solve this one, I think what I'm going to do is uh, multiply this one by negative 25. Because that'll cancel out my, my x's. So multiply this by negative 25, negative 25x, negative 25y. Uh, 40 times negative 25 is 1,000. So now I add them together, x's cancel, uh, y's become 25y and negative 1,000 plus 1,200 is 200. Divide by 25, and it looks like y is 8. And if y is 8, and plug it back in here, looks like x must be 32. And if I wasn't you know, confident in that answer, I would also plug it back into this equation and make sure that the left side equals 12. All right, give those problems a try. Let me know what questions you have, and uh, good luck with your practice.